yield back. Uh, I'd like to take a, a moment to ask a few questions of the witness. Uh, Director uh, Tettelbach, thank you for your testimony uh, today. Do you believe that the Second Amendment uh, is an important right? I believe all the uh, constitutional rights that we have are important. So you're not one of those people who says we'd be better off without it? Uh, I'm one of those people who says what the law says, what the Constitution says, is what we should do and, and what we have to honor. I understand that, and I'm glad to hear you say that. But uh, as sort of a matter of what's best for society, do you think it's important that our Constitution does have a Second Amendment? I think that all the amendments are important. It's very hard to start comparing the right to freedom of religion versus the right. To, they're all important. They're okay, all so important why do you rights. think the Second Amendment is important? Why, why do why, I? Why is it important that we have a Second Amendment? Well, at the, most, at the most basic notion, because I'm an American, because I follow the Constitution and the, the, the founders, uh, or sure, or sure when they I'm enacted the Bill of Rights. I mean, right. I... It, I uh, why is it important, the Second Amendment? That particular right, why is it important? I mean, I mean it's, it's part of our founding document. It's in the Constitution of the United States, along with all these other uh, rights that are so, very so you're important. you're glad it's there, the Second Amendment? Sorry? You're glad it's there. You're glad it's part of our Constitution. Uh, it's part of being an American is that that Constitution, when we take an oath in public service, uh, unlike any other country, right, we take an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States. That's what we swear to do. It, sure. so, so that's an important oath, and that's a very important document. And I'm glad to hear you say that. We have had amendments that have been repealed. You're not someone who says it'd be better if we just repealed the Second Amendment, right? Uh, I, I have never participated in anything like that. And again, but your it opinion, is my job. Your opinion, it is you, my you think that'd be a good or bad thing? It is, it is my job as ATF director uh, to honor the, 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 the constitutional rights and legal statutes passed by Congress, and I do. And I'm very glad to hear you say that. But as an American, uh, do you think that'd be a good or bad thing if the amendment was repealed? Again, I, I don't think as director of ATF, me, me giving my personal opinions on which laws are more or less important is, is, is the right thing to do. But something in the Constitution is, of course, very important. Okay, so you don't want to say right now, affirm that you believe it's good that we have a Second Amendment? I, I, I don't want to... I don't think it's appropriate to give my personal opinion on any of the particular amendments. They're in the Constitution. All right. They Thank are the much. highest law of the land. So you also uh, testified in your written testimony uh, that we have more than 100 people who die from firearms violence across the country every day, and you say that most of these tragedies uh, never make the news. Are you aware of a, uh, and I think we can all agree that this is, uh, you know, an unspeakable tragedy for every family. Are you aware of a study from 2017 by the University of Chicago sh that showed that the average murder or shooting suspect had approximately 12 prior arrests in their criminal record? I'm not aware of that particular study, but I, I'm not aware of that particular study, no, sir. Does it sound wrong to you or does it sound plausible? Uh, I think, as I said before, it, there's this many people who do crimes and then trigger pullers are a much smaller percentage, and they tend to repeat sure. uh, crimes. And identifying those for state and local law enforcement is very important. Absolutely. So we can focus our resources on the shooters, right? Sure, exactly. And the D.C. Uh, police chief has said that it's on average 11 uh, prior arrests for uh, homicide suspects in this jurisdiction. This is Robert Conti, chief of police in D.C. Uh, he said that what we've got to do if we really want to see homicides go down is keep bad guys with guns in jail. When they're in jail, they can't be in communities shooting people. Do you agree with that statement? Uh, we work very closely with D.C. police. When their lab was decertified, okay, I'm not asking took over the with, gun lab. I'm asking, do you agree with that statement from the chief of police? When they're in jail, they can't be in communities shooting people. Uh, uh, dangerous people who commit violent crimes should be incarcerated. All right, thank you. We've heard a lot of statements from the other side of the dais today, uh, sort of in very high tones, uh, speaking about the lack of uh, efforts to, uh, to deal with gun violence and a lot of very partisan attacks. But as you might be aware, uh, Congress recently actually acted uh, for, uh, to prevent uh, violent crime in Washington, D.C. by repealing a measure that would have lowered penalties for crime across the board that the District of Columbia uh, had enacted. Now, that measure uh, was signed into law by President Biden, uh, as you may know. Uh, 81 members of the U.S. Senate voted for it, 81 to 14. And yet every single person on the other side today who has spoken up saying uh, that we need to do more about gun violence voted against that measure. Does that strike you as a hypocritical, Director? Um. Sitting here today, there are obviously very passionate views on all sides, as I said, in the middle here. Sure. Um, and it's, it's not my role to engage in, in that kind of role. I run a law enforcement agency, 
and the decisions that Congress makes on policy are things that we then take and try to implement in the but, but your testimony talked at great length about gun violence, and you've just recognized that much of it stems from repeat offenders. So isn't it a good thing that we managed to at least make it so we don't have as many repeat offenders in this district? Uh, again, I, I don't run law enforcement in the district. They're partners of ours. We work closely with them. Um, and, and I'm not a policymaker. I'm not a member of this body. I leave it to members of these bodies to make those policy decisions. Then we take the results and try to protect people with them. Uh, thank you. Ms. Bish is recognized for five minutes.